Aren't you marvelous? Well, what do you mean? You've been sitting at that typewriter for the past three hours mumbling, I am a lady. I am a woman. Well, so you just don't understand how an author must search for the right word. Search? There was a manhunt. Well, now tell me, do you think she should say, I am a woman, or I am a lady? Well, it depends on what she is. Well, she's both. Why don't you play safe and just call her a female? Oh, now there you go again. Now, how do you think it would sound for her to stand up and say, I am a female? Well, I was only trying to help. No. Uh, say, haven't you a date with Commissioner Weston to take him to your rehearsal tonight? Oh, so. I did want to rewrite this scene and take along with me, though. Well, then call her a woman and let us go with that. A yeah, woman isn't bad. It's very good. Yes. I am a woman. Hmm. Say, that is good. I am a woman. Sheer genius. I am a woman. Now, come on. Let's get down to police headquarters. All right, Commissioner Weston. Ready to see the rehearsal? Well, Cranston, as a matter of fact, I'm, uh, well, I don't care much for mystery plays, and as for rehearsal... Uh Oh, grab him quickly, Lamont. He's slipping through our fingers. Uh, No, Commissioner, Uh, I want your opinion on the play. After all, I am, as you've told me so often, merely an amateur criminologist. I'd appreciate the judgment of an expert. You really want my opinion? Your invaluable opinion, Commissioner. Well, in that case, Miss Lane, since you put it that way... uh... And the publicity agent thinks it'll be good for the show if you come to see a rehearsal. Oh, so that's it. So I'm just being used as a publicity gag. But good publicity, Commissioner. Here's your hat, Commissioner. And your coat, Commissioner. Well, I've... uh... Come in. Uh, Good evening. Oh, I... I didn't know you had visitors, Chief. Oh, come in anyway, Doc. Come on in. Thank you. Miss Lane and Miss Cranston, Dr. Kilgore. How do you do? How do you do? We've met before, Doctor. Yes. Doc Kilgore is our medical examiner. He's been with the force for how long is it, Doc? Uh, Forty years. Next Thursday, Commissioner. Yes, of course. And by the way, Doc, the men on the force are throwing a little party for you to celebrate your long service. Yes, I, I know. And I appreciate your thinking of me, really, but I... You know, I just hate to be reminded that I'm getting old. Well, I, uh... Doc, I've been thinking things over, and I thought that the party would be a good place for you to uh, announce... My retirement? Uh, Yes, Doc. Now, I have your pension papers in the drawer of my desk chair. I haven't signed it yet because I wanted to talk to you first. Well, uh, hasn't my work been satisfactory, Commissioner? Doc, you're the best medical examiner in the country. But we're thinking of you. You've worked hard all your life. Now you can retire at full salary and enjoy yourself. Oh, why? If I retired, I'd, I'd be dead in six months. Now, Doc, that's no way for you to talk. I'm an old fire horse, Commissioner. I, I wouldn't know what to do with myself if I didn't have my work to do. <laughs> but, of course, if you want me to retire, I'll do it. I wouldn't think of it, Doc. I was only doing it for your sake. Well, then, shall we forget it for the time being? <laughs> You see, I don't want to retire yet, Commissioner. Oh, forget it then, Doc. All right. All right. Now, I, I guess I'd better get along. Oh, uh, what is it you came in to see me about, Doc? Oh, what? Uh, uh, would I... you rather we left the room, Dr. Kilgore? Oh, no, no, indeed not. It, it can wait until morning. Well, we'll miss the first act unless we hurry. Uh, you see, Doctor, Mr. Cranston's play is in rehearsal tonight, and he wants my critical opinion. But if you want to talk to me, I'll be glad oh, to. Oh, no, but... no, indeed. What I have to tell you can wait, Commissioner. Oh, well, let's go then. Oh, uh, uh, by the way, Doc, those reports I wanted you to look at are right here on my desk. Yes. Now, you sit right down and go over them. There'll be 
no one around here to bother you at this time of night. <laughs> All right, Commissioner. We've got exactly 16 minutes to get there. We'll never make it. We will with the police escort, Miss Lane. Police escort? Wow, did you hear that, Lamar? Yes, Margaret. Goodbye, Doctor. Goodbye, Goodbye. Goodbye Doctor Kilgore. Uh, don't work too hard. No, no, I won't. Have a nice time. Thanks, we will. I'm going to work the siren. <laughs> Where did he say those reports were? No, they're not here. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Here they are on the desk. Now, let me see. Oh, yes, indeed. This is going to be a mighty interesting case. Well, that... That's odd. I thought I heard something. Hey, who's there? Uh, who's there, I said. I I can't see you over there in the dark. Oh, no. No, not you. No, 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 don't look at me that way. No, no, you... You could not. I'll call for help. Oh, please. Please, you... You couldn't. W- what have I done to you? Oh, please speak to me. Just... Don't just keep looking at me that way. Oh, you... You wouldn't kill me. Why, you couldn't. That's a, it's impossible. I, I'll call for help. I just... I just door is locked. Oh. Oh. <laughs> well, Commissioner Weston, what's your opinion? Well, I think you've got a mighty nice theater here. A mighty nice thing. I think Lamont's more interested in your opinion of his play, Commissioner. Well, of course. Oh, that. Well, uh, now look, Cranston. Your villain is supposed to be a master criminal. Yes. He makes a foolish blunder, for one thing. Well, then, you don't think a master criminal would leave his fingerprints around, even by accident? Emphatically, no. Well, I don't see why. Uh, Mr. Weston, you're being paged, Commissioner. Yes, yeah, one of my men from headquarters. Guy, what are you doing here, Giles? Well, Dr. Giles, hello. Chief, I've got bad news for you. Doc Kilgore is dead. Dead? What? Why, we just left him two hours ago in my office. He's been murdered. I know how you feel, Giles. I know how we all feel. Who did it? Who would want to kill him? I wish I knew, Giles. Step on it, Murphy. Yes, sir. Dr. Giles, you were Dr. Kilgore's assistant, weren't you? He was more than just my superior... He was the best friend I ever had. He put me through medical school, got me the job as his assistant. Well, he was so good to everyone. Why? Why should anyone want Come on now. Come on. Pull yourself together. Oh, I'll be all right. I'll be all right. Have you had a chance to examine the body? Uh, yes, I have. What did you find? Doc had been stabbed at the base of the skull with a sharp instrument. Yeah. Death resulted almost immediately, Commissioner Weston. Poor old man. At least he never knew what happened. Chief, if it's the last thing I do, I'm going to bring the Doc's murderer to justice. Discovered Doc Kilgore's body, Molly? Uh, no one, sir. What time was it? You've asked him that question at least four times, Mr. Weston. And you've interrupted this investigation at least 50. Oh, Commissioner, you're exaggerating. I haven't said more than a dozen words in the last two hours. Please, Miss Lane. All right, but I just wanted to be helpful. Uh, what time was it when you discovered the body, Molly? About 11 or uh, just before 11. You were off duty at 8 o'clock. What were you doing at the office at that hour? Is this the third degree, Commissioner? No, this is not the third degree. We don't use the third degree. We don't believe in third degree methods. Well, you don't have to shout at me and you needn't leave your office. I'm not leaving my office, but you are. What? Giles, Giles, where's Cranston? He's out here examining the body. He is. His evil ask him to come in here immediately. Speaking about me, Commissioner? Now, look, Cranston. I don't mind you and Miss Lane being here, but she's interfering with my investigation. I am not. I was just... I was... To... All right, Margo. I think it's time you went home anyway. Yeah, it's 2 o'clock in the morning, then. No, I'm not going home. I'll wait outside for you, Lamont. And as for you, Mr. Weston, it wasn't necessary to be so rude. Good night. Rude. Now maybe I can get somewhere. Uh, Dr. Giles, tell Commissioner Weston what we've just discovered. Well, it's your idea, Mr. Clanson. You tell him. Well, all right, uh, Commissioner. Do you, uh... Need me any longer? I, uh, I'd like to go home. Go ahead. But I haven't finished questioning you yet. I'll see you tomorrow morning, Molly. Uh, yes, sir. Good night, sir. Well, what is it, Cranston? Commissioner, do you remember Killer Norvelli? 
Remember him? I certainly ought to. I sent him to the chair in 1931. That's right. He was a tough customer, all right. Murdered about five people with his knives. Commissioner, before he started on his career of crime, he was a knife thrower in Vaudeville, is that right? Yes, that's right. He... Now, what are you driving at? And Dr. Giles tells me he performed the autopsy on him. Right, Giles? Yes, I'll never forget. It was the fall of 1931. My first big assignment after Doc Kilgo got me my job in the department. What's a murderer electrocuted eight years ago got to do with the death of the doctor? I don't know the answer to that, Commissioner. But there's an odd similarity in the murder technique. And as Dr. Giles pointed out, the weapon used on Dr. Kilgore left the same tri-cornered mark as found on Novelli's victims. Yes, everything is the same. Why, if I didn't know Novelli was dead and buried, I'd say he was our man. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute, gentlemen. I can see exactly what you're thinking. Killer Novelli comes back from the dead to kill a man he never had anything against. Oh, no, no, Grant. All right. All right, Commissioner. Now, uh... What about fingerprints? As I told you before, Cranston, a smart criminal doesn't leave his prints around. But O'Reilly found a clean-cut set of prints right in the center of your desk, Chief. He's down on the files right now, checking up on them. What? On my desk? You say a complete set of prints was found? Four fingers and a thumb, all perfect. No smudges. Perfect? Well, you're very fortunate, Weston. We'll have the murderer within an hour, Cranston. I wish you luck. Uh, Chief, I've got the murderer. Here's the rat who killed Doc Kilgore. Molly? I knew your story sounded phony. I didn't do it. Dr. Kilgore was a friend of mine. You've got to believe it. Shut up. Now, what is all this, O'Reilly? Well, I was developed in the photographs of the fingerprints we found in your office, Chief, when I heard a noise in Doc Kilgore's office. Yes. I rushed in and caught Molly red-handed going through the Doc's papers. And this paper was in his hand when I jumped to him. Let's see it. Sure, I was going through his papers. But I didn't kill Doc. I I can swear it. Why, he was the best friend I ever had. This is getting to be most interesting. What does the paper say, Weston? Uh, it's a note for eight hundred and fifty dollars, made out to Doc Kilgore and signed Charles Molding. Well, that doesn't mean anything. I, I, I can, I, I can explain this. Yes, I'd like to have you explain this, Molly. Well, I, I did owe Doc eight hundred and fifty dollars, but I, but I paid him back early this evening. He was busy in the lab and didn't have time to get the IOU for me. After he was dead, I realized how bad things would look for me if the note were found, so I went to his office to get it. Go on, Molly. Well, that's about all there is to tell. He lent me the money to pay off the men I'd been gambling with. I didn't want to lose my job, and I knew I would if you found out that I'd been gambling. You say you paid the money back to Dr. Kilgore? Yes, sir, this evening, and I swear I did. No money was found on Dr. Kilgore. Now, I'll tell you what I think, Molly. You owed Dr. Money, and you couldn't pay him. He threatened to come to tell me about it and about your gambling. You got desperate and killed him to save yourself. I gave him the money, I tell you. I'll get you for this. Please, Molly, come on, get it. Not all right, Giles. I know how you feel, but doesn't anybody believe I didn't do it? Take him away, O'Reilly. All right, Chief, come on. Come on, Give him a hand, Giles. All right, Chief. Ah, well, there you are, Cranston. You're convinced you have Doc Kilgore's murderer? Absolutely. Motive and all. I don't think you have, Commissioner. There are too many loose ends. What about the fingerprints in the center of your desk? Why was the knife thrown in... How do you know it was thrown? Just a hunch. You can't convict a man on hunches. I've got proof and a motive. What happened to the money? There never was any. That was part of Molly's phony story. Oh, I see. (laughs) You know, Commissioner... Those fingerprints intrigue me. Well, go to work, Sherlock Holmes. Oh, for me, I'm going home and get some much-needed sleep. Come in. I'm sorry to bother you, Chief, but is O'Reilly here? No, he's busy. What did you want? Well, it's about the prints, Chief. The ones we found on your desk. What about them? Well, I've checked them, and I've rechecked them. And they don't make sense. What are you talking about? The fingerprints we found on your desk, Chief, belong to Killer Norvelli. But he's been dead since 1931. Please, Cranston, go away and don't bother me. I'm too busy to spend my time watching Bordeaux acts. After all the excitement last night, I had about two hours sleep. Look at this desk, piled with mail. I'll never get through it all. You're missing something, Commissioner. There's a woman I throw on the bill who's simply terrific. I don't care if she is simply terrific. I can't... Knife thrower. A most interesting woman, Commissioner Weston. Madame Maria Novelli. Killer Novelli's widow, you know. Ah, Killer Novelli again. Cranston, if I hear that name again, I'll begin throwing things and it won't be knives. But, Commissioner, don't you think that... Think. Think. I, I'll... Go away, Miss Lane, please. Cranston, go write another mystery play or anything you want, but don't bother me. I got the murder of Doc Kilgore and I got a motive and that's all I need. I hope so, old man. I sincerely I really hope so for your sake. As for me, 
I've got a hunch. Come on, Margot. Bye, Commissioner. Goodbye. Margot, the shadow is going to pay Madame Maria Norvelli a visit backstage at the Lyceum Theater. <laughs> I can see no one. It is I, the shadow. You cannot see me, but I can see you. And you must answer my questions. Who are you? What do you want here, Mary and Novelli's dressing room? Who murdered Doc Kilgore, Madame Novelli? I don't know what you mean. Is it Killer Novelli? Novelli? No. No, it could not be. He is dead. Novelli was your husband? Yes, but he is dead. Dead, I tell you. That is the truth? That is the truth. He was evil. He killed with the knives, the beautiful knives. I teach him the great art to throw the knives, and he uses it to kill. Who else have you taught to throw the knives? Ah, oh, many. But there was one last year I taught him. He was very good. He learned quick. He learned as good as Novelli. I want him to join the act with me, but... He, he... Go on. Go on. He say no. He say he got other reasons. Other uses for the knives. Ah. Oh. He is evil, too, like Novelli. You aren't lying to me? No, it is true. Everything is true. What is this man's name? His name? Oh, no. That I cannot say. He make me promise not to tell. He say I kill you if you tell. You must tell me his name if I'm to help you. Oh, please. Please do not ask that. Quickly, Madame Novelli, his name. All right. I will tell. His name. His name is... Giles report, the same weapon that killed Doc Kilgore also killed Madame Novelli. Any fingerprints found this time, Lamont? Oh, yes. The ever-present fingerprints were there. Perfect set as usual. And of course, they belonged to our friend, the late Killer Novelli. But how could a dead man go around killing people? He couldn't, Margot. That's just it. The murderer is merely using a very clever device to throw the police off his trail. Yet the fingerprints do match, Lamont. Yes, confound it. That's the confusing part of this whole thing. If I knew how the murderer performed this neat little trick, I'd know better where to look for him. Well, darling, at least you were smarter than Commissioner Weston. He thought Molly was the guilty party. <laughs> oh, boy, was a bit upset that the killer should have struck again and Molly safely guarded miles away under lock and key. Still, I can't be too hard on Weston. My record hasn't been too good on this case either. All I know, maybe Killer Novelli is alive. Maybe he's the man we're after, after all. Oh, oh I know that mood of yours when I hear it. Come on, Chief. You and I are going out for a nice, brisk walk. Oh, it's getting pretty late, Margo. Besides, I... No, got... I won't take no for an answer. Now, come on. Uh, my hat and my gloves and... Oh, dear, look at them. Just look at them. Look at what? Oh, your gloves. Well, what's the matter with them? Well, they're ruined, that's all. Ruined. I just got them back from the cleaners, and they washed them instead of dry cleaning them. <laughs> now, look. Yeah. They've ripped. Of course they've ripped. All the oil's been washed out of the leather. If they had any sense, they'd Wait a minute, know. Margot. Oil, leather, preserve... Margot, if the oil was still in the leather, the preserving oil, they'd still be good. It's, uh, the gloves, I mean. The mom, sometimes that's I That's it, think... Margot. Of course that's it. You've just given me the one link I need to solve the case. But how? I don't understand what Remember you... Remember I told you if I knew how the murderer performed his trick, I'd know where to look for him? Yes, but what... Well, Margot... Right now, the shadow has to make a call on a gentleman in a dissecting laboratory. No, no. What do you mean? 
You can't know anything about me. I know this, Giles. That only you and Dr. Kilgore would have been able to get the fingerprints of Killer Nolfilly after he was electrocuted. Mm -hmm. And with Dr. Kilgore dead, it was pretty obvious who the murderer was. You know a little too much, Shadow. I have a knife in my hand. I can't see it, but I can hear you. Why don't you throw your knives? Yes, Shadow. (laughs) There. Just before the heroine says, I am a woman? Yes. Uh, no, no. Oh, 